So, all right, guys, I think we can probably then get started uh, with the webinar. Uh, so, uh, I know some people are probably still joining, and while they're joining, I'll just you know kind of cover uh, some ground, and uh, yeah, then then just basically tell you about the agenda, uh, and yeah, then we can get started in just a few minutes. Uh, so, myself, I'm Kristaps. I'm from SPH Engineering, and I'm currently the product owner of UGCS software for flight planning. And so uh, me personally, today I'll be talking about UGCS Expert and how you can use it for planning uh, your LiDAR flights. Um, I'm then joined by Alvin and Cody from Green Valley International. And so guys, maybe you can just do some brief introductions about yourselves and uh, then we'll proceed to the next slide. Yeah. Hello, my name is Alvin. I'm a solutions engineer at Green Valley International. Glad to have everyone here joining the webinar. And my name is Cody McCall, and I'm the customer su customer success manager and operation operations manager in North America. Um, I'm a recent grad from Berkeley, and I'm a huge, huge fan of UGCS. Glad to be here as well. Thanks for uh, joining us. Yep. So thank you. I'm um, glad to hear you're also a fan of UGCS. That's always uh, very good to hear from our customers and partners. So now I think let's jump on over to the next slide. So just briefly about the agenda. Uh, first, uh, I'll just basically introduce you to GCS Expert, those who are not yet familiar to it. Uh, just quickly also cover some ground with uh, drone connection and flight planning. So how do you normally uh, connect the drone to GCS and how to do some basic flight planning. Uh, and then also I'll explain in a bit more detail how can you plan a LiDAR area scan and corridor missions, as well as how can you add uh, calibration actions uh, and some custom maps as well. So then after that, we'll jump on over to Green Valley International and LiDAR 360, where uh, the guys will basically talk about all the advantages of using LiDAR 360 for data processing, as well as show some uh, samples. So the total estimated duration of the webinar is uh, for the speaking part about one hour, so about 30 minutes each, uh, I expect. And uh, then also we will have a Q&A session afterwards. Q&A sessions, of course, as you know, depend on how many questions do we get and how complicated are the questions, how interesting. Uh, overall, I expect this could be up to hour, uh, 30 minutes in, in total, everything. Uh, so uh, one um, request is please, if you have any questions during uh, the webinar and the Zoom platform, there's the chat and there's the Q&A section. So please make sure to put all the questions in the Q&A section, because also some of them, uh, some of them will answer live, some of them will do in the Q&A session, and some of them uh, we also have uh, from our side, from SPH, we have Valeris, who's our support engineer. And so also he'll be able to answer some of the questions uh, in writing. So yeah, please, instead of the chat, please put everything in the Q&A. Uh, I still have the chat open though. So yeah, if you just maybe want to communicate something to us, you can also use the chat, but ideally, yeah, please use the Q&A for all questions. And uh, the recording of the webinar will be available on YouTube afterwards in our channel, GCS TV. So yeah, I think then maybe let's get started with everything. Uh, just. First, briefly about us. So we are SPH Engineering. We're based in Riga in Latvia, so the EU. Uh, we have four main business lines, which are GCS, then GCS Integrated Systems, and then we also do drone shows as well as do some custom consulting and development. Um, yep, overall, we uh, work in a lot of industries, but specifically with GCS, of course, the main industry is uh, surveying and uh, yeah, we also have a lot of customers who are working in construction and who are also working specifically with LiDAR sensors. Um, yep, yeah, I'm jumping on uh, the next slide. So I'll show you the software as well uh, in a live demo, but to maybe th those of you not yet familiar with GCS flood planning software. So this is just the interface, how it looks like, you know, just so you can at least, you know, get the first impression of uh, how it looks like, how it works. And uh, so now I just want to kind of cover some points on why uh, would it be a good idea to choose UGCS for LiDAR flight planning. Uh, first step, first thing is that uh, you can do all your flight planning on a PC or a Mac. So this installs locally, uh, there's no need to use any browser. So everything's working locally on your computer and you can also use this offline. So even if you are in some remote region or some area without any internet connection, you can still use UGCS to plan your flights and send your drone on missions. 
we also have a 3D interface, which uh, there's one uh, fun fact about it is it actually our 3D interface, it's built on a gaming engine, uh, Unity. So uh, for some of you who are also into games, so it might be an interesting fun fact. Um, but uh, to more kind of serious business, uh, some of the really useful things about GCS is that you can use custom map overlays. So if you're working in some area where you don't have a very good map, then uh, you can actually make your own maps. You can just plan a photogrammetry mission, fly over the area, take the images, and then you can already do more detailed flights based on your own custom map, map that you have created. And if you have questions about that, like I said, put them in the Q&A, and uh, we can also cover some uh, things in a more detailed manner later on. Uh, you can also plan, of course, according to custom digital elevation models or, or digital surface models. Uh, and this also, of course, means that you can plan flights with terrain following. So by default, we're using SRTM4 for elevation data, but you can actually use your own or some other uh, elevation data from some custom source. Uh, you can also catch the maps for offline use. So you can select certain regions uh, of the map that you want to catch, and then you can use this for offline flight planning. Um, also, another thing is that currently GCS Expert, it uh, supports uh, DJI as well as drones from other manufacturers. However, specifically for LiDAR tools, I'll kind of cover this in a second, but for that, uh, it's still uh, mainly DJI drones, although we're working on also adding the support for Ardupelt and PX4. But uh, you can already now use Ardupelt PX4 drones, always this was a possibility, so yeah. And uh, you can also create routes from KML and CSV files. So you can just import the files. Let's say if you have some certain corridor that you need to uh, map out with LiDAR, then you can also just import the KML or the CSV file for that. And then, of course, uh, the main reason why you would want to use GCS for LiDAR flight planning is the LiDAR toolset. Um, so just a couple of things on what's inside the LiDAR toolset. Uh, so first thing is that... Uh, basically, always the pilot specifies the field of view for the LiDAR sensor. And so then based on this field of view, uh, the flight is calculated based on yeah, what sensor you're using and what are the other parameters. So this I'll explain in just a moment once we get to the flight planning. Uh, here, if you look at these illustrations, so one of the main things is that firstly, like I said, you can do all the flights according to uh, AGL. Uh, or MSL uh, altitude. So you can also basically have the drone follow the terrain. This is the default uh, setting actually in the GCS. Uh, for LiDAR specifically, what's important is that uh, when you are, uh, firstly, when, you, when the drone is performing the turns, uh, and especially if these turns are sharper, the smoother the turn, the more accurate the data will be that you will be able to gather. Uh, so one of the things is that with our LiDAR area and LiDAR corridor, the turns will uh, have an adjustable corner radius. So you can basically yeah, yeah, adjust uh, how will the drone corner exactly, and you can make this as smooth as you need to. Uh, similarly, also, you can specify an angle at which the software needs to create a loop turn. So let's say if you have two lines coming together like that, you can tell the GCS that, okay, so in this point, I want the drone to do a loop turn so that, again, the data collected at this point would be more smooth and plus, additionally, this also serves the purpose of calibrating the IMU of the LiDAR sensor. Uh, so specifically for LiDAR, we have GCS Expert License. Uh, later on, I'll also show you our web shop where you can get it. Uh, so what are the cool things about this? So here it features LiDAR area as well as LiDAR corridor tools. Uh, like you saw in the previous slide, also you have the adjustable turn radius as well as loop turns. In the routes that you create, you'll have the figure eight calibration pattern segment, and then also you'll have calibration pattern actions, so meaning that at any point you can execute these actions to make the drone do either a figure eight or a U-shape or J-hook uh, calibration. Uh, you can get it already now on, on shopgcs.com, and also I'll show you uh, in a bit later the bundles we have where we have experts together with LEDO 360 at a uh, discount from the normal price. So then next here, uh, this is, I just want to show you the pattern tools because for these, I need to have an actual drone connected, which in this webinar, most likely I will not have, even though you can see the M300 there in the back, but you know, our time is somewhat limited. Uh, but yeah, so here you can see this is the pattern command. And then if you press on this, then you have the option to add either the figure eight or the U-shape uh, calibration. And then here as well, you can see, so firstly, first thing you can see is the turn following here. So how 
the drone would fly up the hill in this case. So again, like I said, this is automatic in GCS. Uh, another thing here is these adjustable uh, corner radiuses, as well as this is the uh, figure eight calibration. And then of course here, you can also see the uh, uh, loop turns, like I mentioned. So also just in a moment, I think I'll show it to you in the software itself. Uh, so yeah, I think then now maybe let's jump on over to GCS software. So let me just uh, also stop the screen share for uh, just a moment and yep, then share GCS screen. I saw in the chat that um, Rafael, you wrote that you don't have the Q&A. I think you should have it. Uh, make sure you might need to maybe expand the Zoom window, but I think you should be, have the uh, Q&A section uh, down there. Yep, so I think you can find it. Uh, if not, yeah, just then write in the chat and my colleague Valerius will be able to help you. So just a second here. Okay, so you should be able to see a GCS screen right now. So uh, first things first, let's maybe, I'll just now go here and create a new mission just so we can start uh, from scratch. And then I can show you simple flight planning, joint connection, and as well, how do you plan the flights specifically with our LiDAR tool set. So right now the screen's empty. Let's maybe go to some uh, nice place where we can do the flight planning. Let's maybe pick some random spots. For example, somewhere over here, this seems nice. So uh, then essentially everything that will be on the uh, right side of the screen. So let's maybe now select our drone. So this will be for your drone control. So here you'll see the drone card. You can even have multiple drones simultaneously connected. Uh, below that, you'll see the telemetry window, which you can also expand to view additional information. And down here, you'll have the uh, commands. Uh, for drone connection, let's say you have a DJI M300 drone. For this, you need to have GCS for DJI mobile app, so an Android app. You can get this from our website. Later on, I can also show this to you. Basically, just get the APK file from our website, install this on your uh, smart controller or your Android device. Uh, and then just need to make sure that the computer on which GCS is installed as well as the mobile device are on the same network. Once they're in the same network and the drone's turned on, then uh, the drone will appear here in UGCS. Uh, then next thing is that everything will be now on the left side of the screen. So this will be concerning your route planning. So if you go, for example, here to add a new route, we can then select create a new route from scratch. So let's then click here on next. Let's select DJI M300 drone again next. And let's click on OK. So already now, basically, we can plan our flight. Maybe let's move just somewhere over here. By the way, if you want to also change the map source, you can also do this. So we have Google Satellite, uh, Google Hybrid, Bing, and you can also use actually other map providers as well. So let's maybe go somewhere in here. And I think here we can do probably the flight planning. So you can see currently I have the waypoint tool selected. So for now, I'll just demonstrate how you can do the most basic mission, right? So to add waypoints, you can simply hold down the shift button on the keyboard, and then you can add them like so. Simple, right? Uh, if you need to then adjust them, you can either select the waypoints individually, move them around, you can adjust their altitude, and as well, you can select all of the, uh, the whole route, and then you can move the whole route around, move it like so, etc. So this is the most simple thing that you can make, just a bunch of waypoints. Uh, here you have, you'll have the parameters which you can adjust. So you can see, for example, here, currently you have the altitude set for this waypoint. You have the flight speed, uh, turn type. In DJI drones, there's going to be stop and turn and adaptive bank turn, turn types. And then also you'll have the uh, checkboxes to avoid terrain, avoid obstacles, as well as what altitude mode you are using. And then below that, we have additional actions which you can add, including to satellite or recording on or off. But this action is added automatically in the uh, LiDAR area and LiDAR corridor. So basically, now I have our most basic mission uh, here ready. I'll just now enter the name of this route. 
And so now if you wanted to upload this to the drone, what you would do is you would press here on upload. Uh, for emulator, you just need to do this two times. And then if you want to launch the drone, you need to simply press here on the auto mode once the drone is armed. And so now the drone takes off and starts flying the mission. So this is just, I just want to cover the basics. So how do you do the uh, flight planning? And so now I think maybe let's uh, jump on over to the LiDAR tool specifically. Uh, I think then the LiDAR tool I'd like to start with is probably the LiDAR area. And then after that, I can also show you the uh, LiDAR corridor. Let me just also, I'll, op I'll open up the, uh... can you see the screen by the way, guys? Because I saw someone wrote in the Q and A that the screen is black. Um, Cody, Alvin, Valeris. I can hear you, yes. I mean, can I can see? see you, yes. You can see the screen. I can see the screen and you, yes. Okay, perfect. Then, uh, yeah, thank you guys for clarifying. Just want, we just want to make sure, because I've had cases when I'm talking and it turns out the screen isn't being shared or something. Um, yep, so now I'll just move on to some other location. And so then over here, I think, let's maybe try to plan the LiDAR area scan. So now again, to add another new route, we can go here on add new route, click here again. Again, just go next and 300, next, okay. And so now we can plan the LiDAR area. So for the LiDAR area, you can see we have this tool over here. So we have the photogram tree area scan, and then below that we have the LiDAR area. Uh, so basically all both of the tools with the small L letter, this is for LiDAR. So here you have LiDAR area, and then this is where you have the LiDAR corridor. And down here, this is the pattern. So please just don't get overwhelmed by the amount of tools over here, because uh, the ones you need to use in most cases, there's just a few of them. So now we have LiDAR area selected. So the first thing that we can do is we can actually now mark out the area that we want to scan in this case. So you can simply, again, what I was doing is holding the shift button down and then as I was holding shift, I was just gonna click on the map, place the points. Uh, once you're done, you can press on the enter key to complete the figure. And now we still need to add a couple of parameters here. Initially, this is just because this is a fresh, fresh installation of EGCS. So for example, we need to add the field of view angle. In this case, I'll add 80 uh, degrees for that. And then also for leather area, you need to specify at what height you want to fly. In this case, I'll set this as 50 meters. And so this is the initial mission that we get, but of course, you know, we will make some adjustments to it. Um, one of the first ones that I like to make usually is I like to make the direction of the survey lines uh, parallel to the longest edge, even though in this case, it's a square, I can actually maybe change this shape a bit. So maybe let's make it somehow like so. So now we already have our initial ladder area scan done. And by the way, if you now wanted to see uh, what's the actual elevation and for how long would the drone fly with its route, then what you can do is you can go here to, but also just quickly rename this route to LiDAR area. You can go here into parameters and then show elevation. And so now this small window opens up. So over here, you can see the total estimated duration of the flight, how many waypoints will be in there, as well as the minimum and the maximum altitude of it. Plus you can see, of course, here, the terrain elevation and how the drone will be following the terrain. So the green line is the flight, and then this kind of uh, lighter, lighter gray area, this is the uh, terrain, of course. And maybe actually let's try to expand this a bit. The default limitation, by the way, is uh, 500 meters here. So in, if you need to fly further, then you can also change this in the uh, drone uh, profile. So, yep, so now it's calculated. And then I think that's the next thing. Um, let's maybe add a calibration action before we start the uh, ladder area and then after it as well. So then to add it, we can go here on add first uh, waypoint, just because I like to add one waypoint before the route, then the calibration pattern. So let's maybe add this over here. So from here, we'll start. And then after the first waypoint, I'll go here down to pattern. And now I'll click here and then again, just click somewhere here on the map to add the uh, calibration pattern. And so then similarly, after 
the ladder area. So now basically using the, these arrows or using uh, these like bracket keys on the keyboard, you can navigate through the segments that you have. So now with the ladder area segment selected, you can see we have this last point over there. So now what we can do is we can also do the same thing. So just click here on the pattern tool and then we can click somewhere here on the map. So just basically shift click in here to, oh, yep, so now we're on this defense radius. It should just let me quickly go into the drone profile. I'll just change the fence radius to more than 500 meters so we can fly further. That's the default limitation. So I'll just add a couple of zeros there and I think we should be good. Uh, yeah, I, I see the question, Alex. So uh, like I said in the very beginning, uh, the recording of the webinar will be uh, available to you afterwards. So if you can't stay up until the end, or maybe if you missed some parts in the very beginning, uh, we will have the recording up on YouTube afterwards and we'll send uh, the link to your email as well. So yeah, just don't worry about it. You will get the recording of this webinar. So, but yeah, you can see basically now uh, the scheme of everything is as follows. So we can now again use these uh, like uh, bracket keys to move through this. So the very first, we have one initial waypoint. After that, we have our uh, calibration pattern. Next, we have the LiDAR area. And then after that, we have another calibration pattern. So or this, is a, this is a flight on which we could send the drone. But I just now wanted to show to you just a few more things specifically for the LiDAR area. And so some things which you can adjust here. So we already changed the field of view and we changed the flight height. Then additionally here, we'll have, where we have the line spacing, you can choose the spacing to either be specific side overlap in percentage, or you can also make it so that the side distance is calculated uh, in uh, meters. So you can, for example, say, okay, so side distance should be, let's say 10 meters between the lines. Uh, you can also, of course, change the flight speed. And if you're using uh, LiDAR such as, let's say, DJI L1, in that case, you can also specify that. And so then the LiDAR point cloud will also be uh, colorized. If you also specify the camera and then add a camera action here. So set camera by time or set camera by distance. Uh, we have also, by the way, more detailed webinars on LiDAR if you want to investigate this more. So now our time is a bit limited, but also try to cover as much as I can. Um, so yep, then we have forward overlap uh, as well as the direction angle. I hope this is somewhat understandable, but then the most important things specifically for LiDAR area as well as LiDAR corridor are like I mentioned uh, earlier. So first one is that you can uh, do, uh, I think first I'll just show to you the uh, adjustable corner radius. So if we're now looking at this from above, you can see what's the corner radius currently. So the value we have set here is six meters. Now, let's say if you wanted to smooth out the corners a bit more, you can change this to, let's say, 20 meters instead. So now you'll see how the corners will be different and so how it will basically make the whole trajectory more smooth. Keep in mind, for this to work, you need to use the adaptive bank turn trajectory on the DJI drones that's available. And another thing now is that, uh, so how do you do the loop turns? So for the loop turns, it basically depends on what's the angle of these two lines going together. So in this case, this is like roughly 90 degrees. Uh, basically, if you set this LiDAR a loop turn angle to a larger value than the angle at which the lines are going together, then it will make a loop turn. So I think now with 100 degrees set here, so you can see that now as we zoom out, so in all of these turns, you have the loop turn angle. Now, if you don't want the loop turn to be in all of those uh, places, you can, for example, set this to 90, and then only in places where the angle will be less than that, only here now you can see the drone will be doing the loop turn. And then if you want to maybe even decrease this a bit more, you can maybe set it to something like, let's say 85. And now, for example, if I take this and drag it like that, I think now we should have only a line here. Yeah, so for example, you can see now the drone is doing here these normal turns and here in this kind of space where you know it's a bit more narrow than the drone is doing the uh, loop turn in this case. So yeah, that's in essence uh, how you plan a LiDAR area in GCS. And so now once you have everything here planned out like that, uh, then well, basically the next step is when you want to fly this with your drone, do the same thing as I showed you previously. First, you upload the flight to your drone 
again, like I said, with the emulator, oh, sorry, you need to disarm the emulator drone for it to be able to quickly move through here. So sorry about that. Let's do the upload once more. Yep. So now you can see this is at zero uh, meters AGL. And so now we can simply arm the drone and then click on auto mode and send the drone on the mission. So yep. um, it's also, by the way, possible to it's understandable that in some cases you will fly these very long LiDAR flights. In that case, uh, with DJI drones, they will remember the last point where you stopped. So let's say if you need to change the uh, battery at some point, then you can see when you press here on the upload, you will have you now have two options. You can either start the route from the beginning, like we did now, or you can start the route from a specific waypoint. So you can enter the waypoint's number because as you mouse over any of them, it shows the actual waypoint number. And then, uh, so over here, now you'll have a third option with DJI drones where it's possible to basically continue from the exact point where the drone left off. So uh, yeah, it's just a simple way how you can restart the route if you need to change the battery during the flight. Yep, and so now for this uh, route as well, we can go here to show elevation. And so now I can again see the whole elevation profile, see the total estimated duration, waypoint count, uh, and so on. And so now just one another thing I wanted to show to you is the LiDAR corridor as well. So now let me just again create a new route over here. And by the way, if you get a bit like overwhelmed by the software, it's understandable for new users might be a bit too much. We're also now doing uh, these regular trainings uh, for new users. So uh, yeah, just don't worry about that. You can go on over to our site, uh, get the trial or the, you know, purchase the expert license. And then, uh, yeah, you can just also join the trainings or view our YouTube videos. So yeah, just uh, don't worry about the steep learning curve because once you really get into it, then it just offers you a lot of customizability uh, in your flights. And I think uh, a lot of our customers can say that this is really like that. So now uh, let's do the LiDAR corridor. I think at the very beginning already now, I'll first do the calibration pattern over here. And so then after that, you can select LiDAR corridor tool. Uh, similarly, how we did for the LiDAR area, first you enter the field of view and then you enter the flight height. So in this case, this would be 50 meters. And then with the corridor, of course, what's different is that instead of drawing out a polygon, now here you'll be drawing out an exact line that will follow uh, some pattern. Usually I'm trying to find some road that I can get it to follow. But in this case, I think let's just try to make it like so. Now let's wait for this to be calculated. Uh, with the corridor, if you want the drone to fly back as well, then you can simply do that by increasing the width of the corridor. So let's maybe try something like 80 meters. Let's see. No, might actually need a bit more there. Let's try 120. Yep, so now I can see the corridor kind of goes in both directions. If you need to make some adjustments here, such as let's say adding some more points, you can do that simply by taking any of these middle points between two other uh, waypoints and just kind of dragging them out to make some adjustments. So essentially you can make the leather corridor follow any uh, custom shape like that. For example, if you wanted to, let's actually maybe, uh, let's just quickly replan this to maybe follow this road right here. So you can see these parameters are the same like they were before. So I think that should be fine. And uh, yeah, so now basically you can put the points along any line like that. So this can be a road, this can be power lines inspection, um, maybe following some a river, something like that. So yeah, it all depends on the, your application. Yep, and just now press on enter to complete this. And uh, oh, I think it still needs to then change this width. So now this should be good at 120 meters. And then for the loop turn angle as well, I can probably then enter maybe something like 90 over here. Yes, yeah, so now I can see it here. At the end, it does the LiDAR loop turn. And plus here, where we have a sharper turn, it also does the loop. And by the way, other parameters you can change here. You can also change the straight flight after turn uh, to yeah, basically define for how long should the drone fly after it does the turn which also kind of you know, increases the size of the loop turn itself. And then after it does the corridor, you can also, of course, add another uh, calibration pattern in here. So th those would be the main, uh, the main tools, specifically in the ladder tool set for GCS Expert. Uh, but there's a lot of customizability in the software itself, 
uh, just one example I want to quickly mention is that if you go here into map layers uh, for the map, you can see currently we're using Google Hybrid as the base map. And then also if you, for example, want to use Google Satellite, then you can also do so or use Bing maps, for example, or even use your custom uh, map overlay. So if you want to do that, you can click here on add, enter some name for it, and then click here on upload and then select the folder where you have the GeoTIFF file. And so this is how basically you can use your own maps. And in a similar way, you can also do the same with the elevation. By default, we're using SRTM4, turn elevation data, but you can also use your own. Um, yeah, that, that would be, those would be the main things, I suppose, for using UCS Expert. Uh, and like I said, we're now also doing regular trainings. Next training will be on the 19th of July. So actually now, if you haven't taken GCS free trial, you can now go to the site and either take the trial or just already take the full subscription or perpetual license of expert. And uh, so yeah, then you can try it out and uh, you can join the training after that. And uh, yeah, just get into more detail on how to, you can do your flight plans. Uh, but yes, yeah, so since, like I said, our time is somewhat limited. If you guys have some more questions about GCS, that I can, I'll be able to answer, then just keep in mind, we will have the Q&A session after uh, the next uh, speaker session. So yeah, in, in there also, I'll be able to show the software, show certain parts of it. So yeah, just with any questions, either put them in the Q&A or uh, yeah, just uh, I'll, I'll try to answer them live in the Q&A section that we will have. Uh, but all right, I think now I'll pass on the torch uh, to the guys from Ladder360. And so I'll just now stop my screen share. And I think then, guys, you can probably proceed with sharing your presentation. Thank you, Chris. Um, so this presentation is composed of four major sections. First, I will introduce the background of Green Light International. And I will move forward by introducing the LIDAR 360 software, uh, its major functions and advantages. After that, uh, Cody will jump in and continue to talk about the industry application part. Uh, so oh, sorry, yeah. but I'll, I'll, just, I'll just quickly interrupt because I, I just saw another question here in the chat. Uh, the recording will be available afterwards. So don't you worry about that. Uh, the recording of the, of the webinar will be up on our YouTube channel, plus it will be sent to your email. So yeah, just uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, sorry, Alvin, and go ahead, please. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we are a company that's headquartered in Berkeley, California, USA and we provide a range of products and solutions related to 3D mapping technologies. We have partnered with many other great and strong companies around the world, together providing the most effective products and complete solutions to our customers. Let's start uh, talking about the LiDAR 360 software. Uh, LiDAR 360 is a post-processing software that can be used to process and analyze point cloud data in many different formats. We have a large resource network across the globe, and our users are from more than 130 countries and regions with about uh, 100,000 console downloads. Uh, LiDAR 360 was first released back in 2013, which was called LiDAR originally. After five generations of major updates, we have added a huge number of new features and enhancements to LiDAR 360. Now it is composed of the framework, the ring, forestry, power line, and mining modules. The software is becoming more and more comprehensive. The performance has been also improved by a lot, and the software now can handle up to a terabyte of data at a time. Let's move on to the advantage of LiDAR 360. The four major advantages of LiDAR 360 are complete, proficient, efficient, and user-friendly. Each of these advantages will be discussed in the coming slides.
LiDAR 360 is very simple to use and it supports one click process operation. Uh, as you can see under each of these tabs, uh, there are recommended tools and workflow available for frequently used functions. Uh, users can simply uh, uh, choose uh, the tools that they want and click the wrong button to execute the functions. And by searching the tool name or finding a tool by its module, users can quickly access the tools they need. The concise toolbox design makes operation easier for the users. There are more than 270 tools available in Ida360, and they can be searched and easily found by using the toolbox. And during the data processing, if users need to work with multiple data sets, they can create multiple viewers, drag different data to these uh, viewers, and it, it supports a split screen display of data. Yeah, so different data sets can be put into the separate viewers so users can compare them side by side. And LiDAR 360 has strong data compatibility. Although it was designed to mainly work with point clouds, but it also compatible with a variety of other data types, including images, vectors, and models. And multiple operating languages are, are available. The software supports custom tool settings and many different uh, styles. Users can define and set the commonly used tools as an independent toolbar according to their operating habits. At the same time, LiDAR 360 supports the choice of different operating languages. The currently supported operating languages include English, Korean, Japanese, Spanish, French, and Chinese. So on the left-hand side are the, all, all the tools available in LiDAR 360 and users can move the tools from the left-hand side to the right-hand side based on their needs. So, uh, and forming a custom toolbar, so all the customized tools will be under it. So users can have their own workflow by doing this. Uh, as I mentioned before, LiDAR 360 is supposed uh, many different data types. And this example shows the, the multi-source data collaboration to solve industry uh, applications. And, and this example is a collaboration of image data and point cloud data using the vector editing tool uh, for the window linkage. So, they, so so we can use this uh, window linkage to uh, link the image to the point clouds. And we call LiDAR 360 a post-processing software but it also provides accurate, efficient, and fast data pre-processing functions. 
These pre-processing functions include foresight, trajectory adjustment, smoothing, subsampling, classification, and many other options. The foresight calibration tool can be used to adjust the systematic errors of equipment installation. So as you can see, the, the once the data is processed, it looks like the, the image on the left-hand side. And after foresight calibration, you will, uh, the chrome cows from, from two strips will match together well after the calibration. Um, sorry to kind of interrupt, uh, but I just I think a lot of people might have this question, which might maybe help answer. Um, yes. We have a question about: uh, Is there some training in LiDAR 360 available? So let's say if somebody you know uh, buys, let's say GCS expert together with LiDAR 360, uh, where did they, where can they get the training on LiDAR 360? Uh, we have a GVI website and the uh, and the tutorials. Uh, of the frequently used tools. And we also have tutorial videos on our YouTube channel. Yep, so I think then uh, maybe, uh, I hope then uh, Niat that answers your question. I think also later on in the Q&A, we can also maybe share, uh, I'll just show you the website itself so you can also see you know, where exactly you can find these videos uh, to basically train yourself to get started with the uh, software. Uh, but yep, so uh, sorry, uh, thank you for that. And sorry, Alvin, so yeah, let's continue. Okay, yes. And after foresight, if the matching quality among the streets is not uh, is still not satisfying, uh, the trajectory adjustment tool can be further used to reduce the errors. After all the adjustments are completed, data quality analysis and evaluation can be carried out, including trajectory quality, density quality, high differential quality, and control point report. And this data smoothing function is suitable for data with a, a relatively flat ring. Uh, it can make the point cloud look smoother and thinner. And after it's uh, processed, uh, users can use the visualize, visualize by bio tool to visualize the two point clouds before and after with different colors to see the difference. And also the use the profile wheel tool to see the profile wheel of the two point clouds. Um, and one of the very basic and but most important tool is the remove outliers tool. Uh, the remove outliers tool can remove most of the unuseful noise points in the data, making the data more accurate. The noise points in the air and underground will be removed, and this is very helpful to get reasonable results when displaying the point clouds by elevation. If, if there are like many noise points in the air or underground, the, the elevation will be, the, the value will be affected uh, to get a like, very large or, or even negative values. And if the point cloud is too dense originally, it can be subsampled by using the resampling tool. So some, sometimes uh, the point cloud will be unnecessarily dense, so it, it can be subsampled by users' needs, either by setting the, the percentage, uh, 50%. So as you can see on the left-hand side, originally it has that for 4,400 points. And then it will be subsampled to just about 2,000.
And for point cloud classification, there are many different tools available, uh, either uh, automatically or manually. And certain classes can be classified automatically, including like things like ground points, vegetations, and buildings. And for other classes, users may need to uh, like enter some of the parameters to filter them out. And after the auto classification for features that are typically classi classified inaccurately with the help of the profile editing function, the features can be finally reclassified. And in this example, uh, once, it, once the points are classified, we can use the profile view tool to view the profile view of the point clouds. And as you can see, uh, the, the building has been classified into uh, vegetation. So we can use the profile editor tool to reclassify the points from vegetation to buildings. And there's a, a tool called classified by machine learning, which uh, is manually classify a small area of the data to form a training sample first. And then the, tr the, the training sample can be imported into this tool. And then it, it can classify the entire data based on the training sample. LiDAR 360 is highly efficient in terms of data processing. It supports batch processing of data and supports a terabyte level data display, rendering, and editing. Users can load terabyte level data in seconds and display the data in multiple windows for cross examination. Yeah, and I just quickly also wanted to maybe add that um, uh, the software itself, it's, it's amazing. And that's also actually the reason why uh, when we were actually looking at different LiDAR processing programs, we decided that it's best to partner with LiDAR 360 just because at least in our view, it's uh, the the best kind of uh, price performance ratio you can currently get as far as LiDAR processing software goes. And so, yeah, I think that's why this is a really, really good solution. So, yeah. Please, please go on. Thank you. And the software supports multiple data rendering options, including by elevation or by intensity, classification, RGB, uh, which is the characterization of the contrast. And also it supports display by the files as sh shown before. Uh, different different parental files can be displayed in different colors and many other options available. Um, when processing like large, large projects with a large number of uh, files, a, a batch processing tool is available in either 360. So users can choose the, the tools that they want to process their data with on the left-hand side and move these tools to the right and then import all the data they want to process with, this, with, with these tools. And all the files can be processed uh, at one time. So they don't have to process the data data 
files one by one. This can increase the efficiency of And as I mentioned before, there are more than 270 tools available in Data360. So we are aiming, aiming it for one software to complete all the tasks. And LiDAR 360 supports the conversion between point cloud data in different formats, as well as the conversion between raster data, model data, and vector data. Um, there's a question that maybe we can answer now. The question is, is yeah. there any tool for colorization in LiDAR 360? Oh, yes. There is a tool called Extract Color from Image that can uh, colorize the point clouds by importing a TIFF file. So users can, can merge the images that covers the same area of the point clouds and form from a TIFF file and then use that TIFF file to characterize the point cloud in LiDAR 360. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. I think this answers the question. And LiDAR 360 supports the extraction of point cloud data in different forms, including classification, intensity, and the number of returns to facilitate different user needs. And uh, sorry, sorry again, just there's, I see there's another question from Elizabeth. Yeah. And by the way, just guys, uh, I'll just ask this again, please put the questions in the Q&A and not the chat. But in this case, uh, I think this is, might be a good question to ask now. Uh, so Elizabeth is asking, uh, what's the coordinate system? Is it latitude, longitude or projected ground uh, meters? Um, so I'm assuming it's latitude, longitude, but yeah, just uh, clarify. Actually, uh, LiDAR 360 does not support uh, the, the coordinates in longitude and latitude format. Mm, it okay. has to be it has to be in X Y Z, which is uh, using the projected coordinate systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. So when when importing data with longitude and latitude, the software should prompt you to to select a projected coordinate system and well convert the the, the, the file in longitude and latitude to XYZ formats. And then oops, skip it. And for coordinate system and transformations, and the software supports many options such as define projection, reprojection, and uh, by using uh, four parameters or seven parameters, and also uh, use, use the control point report uh, to address the elevation. And just an update in our latest version 5.3, uh, we updated the GeoE library. So many of the vertical coordinate systems are now supported in our latest version. And Cody will continue on the industry application. Yep, so Cody, I guess you'll now share your uh, screen with us and then you can uh, proceed with your part. Uh, while you are sharing the screen, I'm um, just looking if there's any... Okay, I think any questions we'll have about Leather360, uh, we'll, we have the Q&A section coming up shortly, so we'll address them now. So now I think, Cody, I'm just going to let you kind of roll through your part without stopping. And then, guys, any questions regarding either GCS or Leather360, we'll just cover in the Q&A. So please, Cody. Okay, perfect. Uh, so again, yeah, my name is Cody. Um, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Alvin. Uh, this has been very informative, um, but yeah, we'll just jump straight into it. Uh, LiDAR 360 can be used 
in several different industries. Uh, just for instant, instance, forestry, uh, engineering, mining, city digitalization, et cetera. Uh, agriculture and forestry survey, surveying, attaining forest populations, parameters, height variables, intensity variables, coverage, clearance rate, leaf area index, et cetera. Um, you can even do single tree parameters, diameter crown with uh, DB, average DBH, uh, detection and analysis of forest structure changes, um, which can be really good for anyone who is in either conservation or preservation efforts. Uh, again, you can see the forest point cloud data. Um, there is a, a mass amount of data, there is a mass amount of trees, but we were able to segment every single one of those trees so that you can get an ID on all of them. So that can be good for uh, inventory purposes. And as you can see, if you've moved through. And then so we have uh, our topographic side, which would be creating DEMs, DSMs, contour lines, tins, hill shade, slope, aspect, roughness. Uh, this is very, very good for anyone who is trying to get bare earth models, uh, trying to remove trees, or if you're just trying to do survey for land for construction purposes, um, all of these are extremely handy. Uh, we have a newer version, which is a, a, allows for 3D vector editing characteristics. Uh, you can edit brand new vectorations, functions, uh, digital line graphics, workflow via modification and saving. Um, the vectoration, vectorization of the roof of the building is recognized by the way of intersecting and drawing lines. And the auxiliary section editing function can be used for the vectorization of the building facade. Um, it does allow for uh, multiple different um, building types of, of of selections uh, and designs within the vectorization. On the left-hand side is an example of a semi-automatic vectorization of the building roof. Uh, filter out the features around the area to be edited through height filtering uh, so that the editing interface becomes clear um, by bordering the area to be edited. Vectorization of the building roof can be carried out. On the right-hand side is an example of the semi-automatic shoulder extraction. All these semi-automatic tools can make data processing simpler and increase efficiency. Again, so as you can see, support semi-automated build, building vectorization, and you can utilize HD mapping. So if you're trying to uh, create a smart city, you can do your shoulder extraction, get uh, a very accurate description of your city streets. Um, and then in the engineering side of it, uh, road works, uh, you can uh, manage slips, uh, dip angles, generate road section diagrams. Um, yeah, it's uh, perform cross section analysis, uh, provide an inclination, inclination and direction analysis. Uh, and then earthwork, uh, we do have some volume measurements, which is what is the background picture that I have. Um, it can be used for fill and excavation analysis. Uh, so how much earth and rock to be dug, how much soil and rock to fill, uh, sand mining ships, ore piles, mountain expansion. Um, and so this, is, this, is, this aspect is growing every day. Uh, and again, the mining industry alone is, is um, growing itself. So uh, the use of LiDAR 360 can make your work in the mines uh, much, much, much more efficient. Uh, and so as you can see here, emergency disaster analysis, we have an area and volume measurement, change detection, deviation and analysis. You can see the clear, clear slip that happened there um, that makes it so much easier uh, to really get the, the, the mass of it. Uh, yes, and then, uh, and so mineral detection and analysis, structural surface extraction, uh, this can be for like ge geological purposes, um, getting the different types of rock, geological formations, uh, again, more in the mining applications, we have mine volume measurement, mine change detection and deviation analysis, mine section analysis. So there you can see the inclination change. Um, and then one of our, our pride and butters is the power line surveying, uh, the real-time condition assessment. Um, this does allow for uh, active monitoring and tracking of 
power lines on mass amounts of, of, of lines and data. And it does allow for um, classification of objects in the power line corridor, which can in turn help you classify potential threats and risks of, of any type of falls or damage to the power lines in the future. Um, so that's a, a key beneficial factor. Uh, and again, real-time condition analysis allows you to see exactly what's going on pretty much in real time. Um, and again, so uh, myself utilizing UG UGCS, um, I just a couple weeks ago did a, a demo where I flew two separate drones, or I mean, same drone, two separate LiDAR devices, and UGCS allowed me to input the, the uh, parameters for each of those devices before I got into the field, set it all up just as Chris showed us, you know, prior to getting out there so that once I got out there, connected it to the drone, uh, connected it to the, the pilot app, and was able to take off, land, change the device, do the next one, input it into LiDAR 360, and I had a TLS and ALS data that I was able to merge together um, in LiDAR 360, and uh, it's fantastic, and I, I definitely think that couldn't it have been done uh, to that quality without the use of UGCS. So I'm very happy to be partnering with it. Uh, but yes, thank you for your time. And uh, as you can see, you know, you can uh, reach us at cells at info at greenvalleyinternational.com or technical support at uh, greenvalleyinternational.com. Again, as Chris mentioned, you can uh, visit our website. Uh, we have so, uh, social media links, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, just check us out. So. Thank you for your time. Yep. Well, all right, Cody. Thank you so much. Uh, so now I think uh, I'll just quickly jump for a moment back to the presentation that I had. And then uh, I think since a lot of you guys are interested, I'll show you actually where you can now get the bundle where you have GCS Expert together with Leather 360 on our web shop. So now let me just, uh, again, put this here on the screen. I think now it's probably easier if I just share the whole screen with you guys. So now you should be able to see it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, basically if you want, so this was, this was my presentation. Then of course we had about other 360 that you just now, um, saw. And so now, uh, in case you're interested in getting GCS expert together with Leather 360, we now have, uh, these bundles here on our shop, which actually are, uh, cheaper than just getting the software separately. So to do that, I'll quickly show it to you. So basically, uh, to get to our shop, let's say you can go to gcs.com uh, or you can simply go to shop.gcs.com. But yeah, let's say from gcs.com, you can simply go here to the pricing page. And so pricing basically brings you to our shop. Alternatively, you can simply go to shop gcs.com. This might even be easier. Actually, let me do this, this route so you can also uh, see that. Yeah, and so then up here in the menu, you can see where you have GCS. Then you can just go to GCS plus LED 360 bundles. So everything is over here. And then if you scroll down, you can see you have two options here. Uh, so first one is you have GCS Expert plus the LED 360 framework. So framework is basically the uh, base license. And then uh, after that, if you want to basically get the full package, in this case, you can go here. So this is the uh, next offer, which is GCS Expert uh, plus Leather 360, uh, which also includes the forestry as well as the terrain modules. So if you open this up here, so yeah, you can also uh, see this. Uh, guys, maybe uh, it makes sense if you can also explain uh, just quickly so what's the LiDAR 360 framework and what are the forestry and the terrain modules? Probably makes sense for the listeners to also understand this a bit better. So in, in which case uh, would you choose only the LiDAR 360 framework? And in which cases would you also choose the additional modules for the forestry and for terrain? Uh, so the framework is pretty much like the, the guts of, of the software. It allows for classification. It allows for the analysis, um, your basic analysis. It allows for the bore site. It allows for uh, the trajectory adjustment, strip, strip alignment. Uh, and then when you get into our modules, these are industry, industry specific. So the forestry, as the one that I showed earlier, where the tree segmentation, uh, you would only be able to do that if you had the forestry module. Uh, and so it allows for tree segmentation, canopy breast height, diameter breast height. Um, all of those features that you saw would be added into the forestry module. 
And then the terrain module would be a separate module that would be focused on the topographic side of it. So the DEMs, the, uh, the uh, uh, sorry, uh, the topographic models, the TENs, all of those will be within our uh, terrain module. And then we have a, a mining module. We have, uh, sorry, yeah. Yep, but um, also just want to mention here that uh, even in case you choose to get the uh, like the base well, level 360 framework together with GCS expert, then actually on our site, so on shop GCS, if you now uh, search for LiDAR, actually we have this separately as well. So you can see here, this is where we have the LiDAR 360 framework, and then we also have the forestry license and the terrain module. So meaning that if you first now purchase this package with the GCS expert plus the 360 framework, then in addition to that, you can also actually then get the forestry and terrain module later on as well. So it's not a problem at all. Um, yeah, I think then that's this is basically was just I wanted to show to you guys. So yeah, just you can head on over to shopgcs.com and then over here you can go to GCS plus Ladder 360 bundles. Uh, if you haven't yet used UGCS and would just like to try before you buy, then you can actually go here to UGCS licenses. And so here you can uh, either get the perpetual, or of course here, if you just want to try, you can go and go ahead and get the trial version. So the trial version is at the level of GCS expert. So in this one, actually you do get all the LiDAR tools. So if you want to try this out, you can do the free trial or take this monthly subscription for all the 30 days and yeah, give it a try, see how you like it. And then you can of course, or you then proceed with uh, getting your license. Uh, but yeah, I think then now uh, probably makes sense for us to transition into the Q&A. And so uh, I think now let's, I'll just bring up here the Q&A window. And so uh, any questions that I'll see, I'll kind of try to highlight them. And guys as well, if you see something, you can also just you know take that on you and try to answer this. I see for some of them already have uh, answers. So I'll just now try to, but, but oh yeah, if you have any more, please just put the questions in the Q&A. So now I'll just try to answer them uh, live, uh, the ones that are not answered. Um, one question I see, uh, maybe one of you guys can take this. So the question is from Rob, it's, uh, does this use by base, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, base strip align? I'm not sure what that is personally, maybe you guys are aware. Actually, I have never heard of this term before, so I'm not sure about it. Hmm, okay, so uh, then I suppose that, uh, yeah, let's then skip this. Uh, sorry, Rob, maybe if you can somehow clarify, but yeah, I guess you guys haven't really heard about this method. Okay, let's see what other questions are there. Uh, yeah, so from Chris, I see if you already, if you already have an expert license, is there a discount on Leather 360? Uh, the discount is currently only on the bundles. So if you want to purchase Leather, Leather sorry, if you want to purchase Leather 360 uh, separately, then yeah, you can. You just need to pay the full price in this case, and you can get it from our web shop. Um, so I just want this as answered uh, from Kurt. I see this is, I suppose, about some problem. Um, so how to upload from GCS into Phantom 4. Uh, yeah, I, I see my support colleague Valerius is already answering this question. Uh, but yeah, in any case, if you experience any technical issue with GCS, you can uh, write to us at support at gcs.com and then we'll help you with that. Uh, and also I think Valerius will now kind of try to help you with uh, the specific issue you might be having. Oh, now we have actually the opposite situation. So now, uh, Christopher, I see you have purchased Ladder 360 and are about to purchase UGCS. Um, yeah, so in this case as well, sorry, the discount is only on the bundle purchases. So in this case, for the expert, uh, we only have the full price. So um, again, see if you guys have any questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A section. So now... Uh, oh yeah, uh, from Dylan, I see uh, the feature about adjustable ladder buffer area. Uh, yep, yeah, actually uh, I can maybe now show this to you. Hope you'll now be able to see the screen. 
So yeah, I didn't get time to show the uh, area buffer parameter. By the way, uh, on our site as well, if you just go to gcs.com, let's go here. And then applications and LIDAR. So then in this page, so basically easy to remember, gcs.com slash LIDAR. Then down here, if you want a more detailed explanation of all the, uh, all the specific tools that we have, including in this case, you can see the area buffer, then also you can get this here. Uh, but then I think then now maybe let's go on, go on over to the software itself. So I'll just unlock this route and then I can kind of show it to you. So let's say we have the area buffer. And so now you can basically see it. Uh, what the area buffer does is it kind of increases the distance at which uh, this route will basically kind of go outside of these normal bounds that are here. So this can help you in such cases, let's say when you have a certain area that you need to scan and you want the turn itself of the drone to be a bit outside of this area so that when the drone is flying within the ladder area that you want to scan, that it's only collecting the data on the normal survey lines instead of turning. So in that case, you can use the area buffer to basically make the drone fly a bit outside of it. Uh, and in addition to that, you can also have the overshoot parameter. So if you add the overshoot as well, what it usually does is it adds these additional points here at the end. So you can see then as the overshoot is added, basically it adds these additional waypoints. Uh, let's actually maybe try to increase this a bit more. Yeah, and so then uh, of course here you can see with overshoot it adds additional points but together with that, it also gives you the possibility of adjusting the speed of the overshoot. So let's say instead of the drone flying uh, close to the pre like defined speed of five meters per second, you can make the overshoot uh, either slower or faster than that. So in this case, if you wanted to, you could, for example, make the overshoot at two meters per second. If you wanted the drone to corner a bit more slowly at a more exact speed. Uh, the um, downside of using the overshoot is the fact that uh, it effectively doubles the amount of waypoints you have. So I know some drones, uh, DJI drones do have the limitation of 99 waypoints per mission. And so then this might just mean that you might need to upload a new mission quicker than the battery runs out, even though this is somewhat of a rare case. Uh, but yeah, just keep this in mind because now if we go here into show elevation, you can see total duration as well as the waypoint count. And then if I, let's say, go ahead and remove the overshoot, then in that case, you can now see that the waypoint count has uh, decreased. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Uh, if you just want to extend the area, easiest way I had to do that is using the area buffer. If you want the drone to also corner at a different speed than how it's flying the normal survey lines, then the best option for that is to use the overshoot uh, parameter. So I hope that answered your question. So I'll now just bring this up. And let's see what other uh, questions we have here. All right, one interesting question from Chris is, uh, do you have an assessment or some kind of comparison between let's say DJI Terra uh, planning and processing chain or some uh, other LiDAR software and LiDAR 360. Um, I suppose the way how you guys maybe can try to answer this is what are the advantages of LiDAR 360 over some other LiDAR uh, processing tools? Uh, we have a range of different uh, processing tools available to improve the data quality. And and also we provide a, a full range of other tools within the same software. I think the number of tools available in our software is uh, one of the uh, major advantage. Right, so instead of having to use like multiple different programs, you can basically do everything in a single program. Yes. Yeah, well, I think I hope that answers the question. And, and, and as yeah. I also, uh, uh, mentioned during the presentation, uh, we have like a range of tools to, Im to improve the, the, the quality, like from broadside to trajectory adjustment to other tools like remove outliers, cut up overlap, and things like that. 
All right, so uh, I'll mark then this is answered. Um, hopefully, obviously, the, uh, John's also typing an answer, so I'll just uh, leave it for now. Um, okay, I'll just quickly read the next question before I proceed to answering that. So from uh, Francisco, for power line transmission projects, I can work in a linear route for a quickly work. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that specifically, but uh, how can uh, my point cloud minimize the point for the size file? Uh, to be honest, I I'm not sure if I understand your question fully. Maybe you can, can try to clarify that a bit. Or uh, maybe you guys can also read this and see if you can uh, understand this. It's yeah, please. I don't understand this from reading this initially. So I'll just answer some that we have already. I'll just mark some that we have answered, uh, so that I can focus on the ones that we haven't. Uh, but yeah, guys, just again, uh, put any other additional questions in the Q and A. For now, I'll just. Uh, meanwhile, I'll open up again here and do a bit of a shameless product plug by showing the bundles here. I was just gonna say, I think uh, with Francisco, I think what he's asking is, uh, can he on transmission projects fly a straight line path like you showed in the corridor, uh, but then how can he make the point cloud file size smaller oh. or easier and simplified use or sharing? Um, I think that's what I'm, from oh, that, that makes sense. Uh, do you have an answer for this? It's a good question. Um, I mean, definitely clear it up, clean up the noise, uh, remove, cut out any part of the data that you don't need because that will shrink the amount of data that you actually have. Um, uh, yeah, but there really is, I mean, unfortunately, LiDAR point clouds are an extremely uh, data intense uh, uh, process so uh, it's hard to get them to get smaller but you can yeah you can do what you can to minimize it yep well uh francisco i hope that answers the question that you had uh so again i'll just mark this as answered um another one this has been here in for a while already now um maybe you guys uh, can understand this I, I i assume this is more towards you uh so question from, from blair uh does the 2d image support multi-layer uh, tiffs if you can catch the question uh you mean like, like importing that you go light up physics um so basically can can you use multi-layer tiffs multi-layer tiffs um like the RGB. Really, i don't i don't think so yeah yeah i think i think they're asking rgb does the rgb image support multi-layer tiffs or can like a multi-layer tiff rgb no i i think you need to be a a single layer, I guess. Yeah, because I think that would be tiles or like tip tiles. Yes. So yeah, and I, I, I don't think that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, all right. I think then that makes sense. Um, yep. Then any, there's not that many questions left. So, guys, any others that you have, uh, again, put them in the QA. I see there's still some coming up. So, we'll answer these and then I think already soon we will call it. Um, uh, personally, I don't actually know the the, the uh, accuracy difference between the inertial explorer and uh, and lidar three hundred and sixty, but um, I do know that you can uh, input uh, in inertial explorer files into lidar three hundred and sixty. But uh, just uh, maybe to me and some others who might not be aware, of what what is inertial explorer? Because personally, I just haven't used it. I believe inertial explorer process the trajectory directly by while our software uh, process the point clouds based on the trajectory. So I, I guess these are two different things. Okay, all right, and that makes sense. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'll mark this one as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, then there's a question that I can probably take from Chris. This is, is there a way how to add the calibration pattern before uploading from a later waypoint, for instance, after a battery change? This is actually a great question that you asked. Um, I'll try to maybe explain at least how uh, how we normally do this. So let's say you need to fly this route. And then of course here at the very beginning, you have this uh, calibration pattern. And then let's say you maybe fly this route somewhere up until the middle, and then you want to restart this. Um, how I would do it. Um, it's a bit difficult to then add the uh, calibration pattern in here. Well, it's, it is possible. So you can, for example, like duplicate the route and then make the route start from a certain point. But in this case, I'm just assuming route stays exactly the same. Um, in that case, what I would do for the calibration, this is why we actually have the calibration actions. So what you would do is when you press here on upload, you would then, by the way, there's also an option to take off the, the, to the route's first waypoint. But since this calibration, it's like a combination of waypoints, then this doesn't work in that case. Uh, but then, then, yeah, basically what you can do is you can uh, select the option that would make the drone move to exactly where it left off, which would be either start route from a specific waypoint or to start route from what well, basically continue the route, which would be the third option displayed here when you already have completed some part of the mission with a DJI drone. And so then once the drone gets close to this point before it starts the mission, what you can do is you can hold the drone. And then in here, if you remember what I showed in my presentation, let's just go back a few steps. So in here we have the pattern command. And so with the pattern command, you can then execute either the figure eight or the uh, U-shape or J-hook, uh, just two names for it, uh, that calibration pattern. And so then once this is executed, then you can uh, simply press on continue. And so then drone will continue on the route. So this is how I would personally do this. Uh, if you uh, need to do the calibration before the route starts after changing the uh, battery. Um, yep, yeah, I think then, then that was the answer for that question. And now I think uh, let's see if there's any others. So just a second. Ah, yeah. So I see that. Good, good that you saw my answer, Chris. Um, yeah, uh, from Dylan as well, I can see. So is the pattern function considered the waypoint? Uh, no. So the pattern, it's a combination of waypoints. So it's not, not a single waypoint exactly. So it's just multiple waypoints together, basically. Um, all right. I think then that's probably it as far as the questions go. At least I don't see any other uh, new questions being added. So I think then probably uh, we can call it a day, so to say. Uh, so again, just want to reiterate that uh, here on our website, so it, maybe some of you missed this. So shop ugcs.com. If you go to GCS and then UGCS plus ladder 360 bundles, then down here you can see we have both bundles with expert plus 360 framework and then we have expert plus the full package of 360 together with terrain and the forest modules so if you're interested uh you can go ahead grab these packages for you um uh, these work with well basically i won't say most lidars uh, and if you're not sure you can always you know ask us a question does this work with my specific lidar uh, from GCS side, uh, I think this shouldn't really be an issue because basically any LiDAR can be used with GCS Expert as long as the drone is supported. Uh, most of our customers are using uh, DJI M300 drones. Well, by most, I mean about like 30%. Also, you can use, of course, others such as uh, M600 drone. And uh, also soon we will add support for Artopilot and PX4 based drones uh, for our LiDAR toolset. Although I actually know that a lot of people are actually using already now the Ardo Peloton PX4 drones with our normal area scan tools with LiDAR. So it's also even possible to use them now if you are interested in that. Uh, and yeah, for LiDAR 360 as well, you basically, I think you already have the contacts of the guys and if anything, yeah, just uh, reach out to us, reach out to them. And uh, yep, so over here, here you have, uh, again, all the details, yeah, just go to shopygcs.com uh, to, and also there you have our contacts. So yeah, if anything, just, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, 
And yeah, so just I want to again say thank you to everybody who's listening here to the webinar. We will have the recording of the webinar available on our YouTube channel. And plus, we'll also send this out to you directly. So you can go ahead and maybe replay some parts uh, or yeah, just again, grab our contact details and get in touch with us if you have some more questions or want to test the software out before purchasing. So thank you, everybody, and uh, hope to see you in future webinars. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.